Welcome to another deep dive. This time, we're taking a look at how to really understand and appreciate movie reviews. That's right. And to help us with that, we're going to be looking at a guide from the New York Film Academy, NYFA for short, mm -hmm. called How to Write a Movie Review, 10 Essential Tips. Yeah, it's a great guide. Now, you know, you might be thinking, well, I just like to watch movies. I don't need to know all the ins and outs of reviewing them. Right. But I think even if you don't want to write reviews yourself, uh -huh. understanding what goes into a good review can actually make you a much more insightful movie watcher. Absolutely. You start to pick up on things you might have missed before, you know. Definitely. Like you start thinking about the acting, the directing, the story, all those elements that come together to create a film. Yeah. So before we dive into the guide, tell me, when you read a review... What makes you think, okay, this person knows their stuff? Hmm. That's a good question. I think for me, it's when a reviewer can go beyond just saying this movie was good or this movie was bad. Yeah. It's when they can actually explain why they felt that way. Exactly. I'm always looking for that why. Right. And that's where I think it gets really interesting. You know, you start to see the film through the reviewer's eyes. You get a glimpse into their thought process. Yeah, exactly. And even if I don't agree with their opinion... I can still appreciate their perspective right. if they've explained it well. And that's what makes it a conversation, right? Absolutely. You're not just being told what to think. You're being invited to think for yourself. I like that. And speaking of thinking for yourself, the NYFA Guide has some really interesting tips on how to approach film criticism. Oh, definitely. The first one might seem a bit obvious, but it's really important. Watch the film more than once. Uh huh. What do you think about that? I completely agree. The first time you watch a movie, you're often just caught up in the story. Mm, yeah. You're just along for the ride. Exactly. You're experiencing it emotionally. But the second time you watch it, you can start to see things from a more analytical perspective. You can pay attention to the details, the nuances. Mm -hmm. You start to notice the camera work, the editing. The symbolism, the themes. Exactly. Things that might have slipped past you on the first viewing. It's amazing how much you can miss when you're just focused on the surface level, right? Totally. It's like <laughs> peeling back the layers of an onion. I love that analogy. So watching a film multiple times is key. Yeah. But what about actually expressing our opinions about it? The second tip from the NYFA guide is all about that. Right. It's about expressing your opinions, but also backing them up with evidence. It's not enough to just say, the acting was bad or the story was boring. You've got to give reasons. Right. You've got to explain why you felt that way. Give specific examples. Precisely. You've got to show your work. Like, I remember reading a review of Mother where the critic called the film uncomfortable and controversial. Oh, yeah, I remember that review. But they didn't just stop there. No. They went on to describe specific scenes that evoked those feelings in them, and that made their opinion so much more compelling. Yeah, it gave it weight. It wasn't just a random opinion. It was a thoughtful response to the film. It's all about context, right? Okay. Providing that context for your thoughts makes your review so much more engaging and credible. Absolutely. So we've talked about watching a film multiple times and backing up our opinions with evidence. What's the next step on our journey to becoming more informed movie watchers? Well, tip number three from the guide is all about considering your audience. Okay, interesting. What do you mean by that? Well, who are you writing this review for? Are you writing it for your friends? For a blog? For a newspaper. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Your audience is going to influence how you write the review. Like how much detail you go into. Exactly. And the kind of language you use. You wouldn't use technical jargon with someone who's never heard those terms before. <laughs> right. Or spend a lot of time explaining the basic plot points if you know your audience is already familiar with the film. The guide actually uses two reviews of Synecdoche, New York, as an example of this. Oh, interesting. I love that film. One review is a short, concise summary aimed at a general audience. Okay. And the other is a super in-depth analysis written for serious film buffs. So two completely different approaches tailored to different audiences. Exactly. It's fascinating how the same film can be discussed in such different ways. And I think it's important to be aware of that as both a viewer and a potential reviewer. Yeah. To recognize that there are different levels of engagement with film. Right. Some people just want to know if it's worth watching while others want to delve into the deeper meanings and themes. Okay, so understanding our audience is crucial. Mm -hmm. What else should we be thinking about as we watch and analyze films? Well, tip number four brings us to the heart of any film. 
<laughs> the acting. Oh, yes. The actors bring the characters to life. They are the face of the story. So a good review should definitely pay attention to those performances, both good and bad. Absolutely. And the guide uses a great example here. They discuss a review of Whiplash, where the critic focuses on the performances of Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. Interesting. He doesn't just say they were good. He actually breaks down their performances. Exactly. He talks about Teller's intensity and Simmons' commanding presence. He analyzes their acting styles and how their dynamic elevates the entire film. So it's not just about saying whether the acting was good or bad. It's about showing why those performances were noteworthy. Yes. It's about providing insights that the viewer might have missed. And I think that's what makes a review so valuable. It can open our eyes to things we wouldn't have noticed on our own. Definitely. Like in that Whiplash example, I bet the critic highlighted things that most viewers wouldn't have picked up on. Oh, I'm sure. And that's what I love about reading thoughtful reviews. It's like having a film expert guide you through the experience. It makes you a more active viewer. Absolutely. Instead of just passively watching, you're thinking about the choices the actors made, the nuances they brought to their roles. And that can make the whole movie watching experience so much richer. Definitely. Okay, so we've talked about watching closely, backing up our opinions, knowing our audience, and really paying attention to the acting. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to consider as we embark on this journey of becoming more informed movie watchers? Well, tip number five encourages us to go beyond the actors and consider all the other elements that go into making a film. Okay, so we're thinking about the whole team behind the scenes. Exactly. The director, the cinematographer, the editor, the special effects team, everyone who contributes to the final product. So it's not just about the actors on the screen. It's about the whole orchestra working together to create a symphony of sight and sound. I love that analogy. <laughs> and the guide uses a review of A Wrinkle in Time to illustrate this point. Oh, interesting. Tell me more. Well, the critic actually wasn't a huge fan of the film overall. Okay. But they still provided really thoughtful feedback about the special effects, uh, the camera work, even how the fantasy world's rules were presented. So they were engaging with the film on a deeper level, even though they didn't love it. Exactly. It was constructive criticism, not just tearing the film down. I think that's really important, you know, to be able to appreciate the effort that went into a film, even if it's not your cup of tea. Absolutely. And to recognize that every film is a collaborative effort with many different people contributing their talents and expertise. So we're not just looking at the actors, we're thinking about the whole team behind the scenes. Precisely. Yeah. And we're considering how all those elements work together to create the final product. Okay, so we're starting to get a sense of how much goes into a film. Yeah. And how to really appreciate all those layers of creation. Definitely. But let's talk about something that can really ruin a movie experience. Spoilers. Oh, yes. Tip number six is all about that. I mean, no one wants to have the ending revealed before they've had a chance to see it for themselves. It's like having a magic trick explained before you've seen it performed. Exactly. So, how do we discuss a film without giving everything away? That's the challenge. And the guide highlights a really clever approach from a review of Annihilation. Okay, tell me more. The critic actually placed any potential spoilers at the very end of the article under a clear warning. I love that idea. That way, readers can choose whether or not they want to know more. Exactly. It's about respecting your audience and giving them control over their own experience. So we're not just throwing spoilers out there willy-nilly. No, we're being mindful and considerate. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground already. Yeah. Watching closely, supporting our opinions, knowing our audience, and being mindful of spoilers. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to take in, but it's all incredibly valuable. What's next on our list? Well, tip number seven encourages us to expand our horizons as movie watchers. Oh, I like that. How do we do that? By reading a variety of reviews from different sources. Okay, so it's not just about watching a bunch of films. It's about reading a bunch of reviews, too. Exactly. It's about exposing yourself to different perspectives, different styles of writing, different ways of thinking about film. It's like learning a new language. I like that analogy. You're immersing yourself in the world of film criticism absorbing all those different voices and approaches. So what kind of sources does the guide recommend? Well, they mention websites like Rotten Tomatoes, which can give you a quick overview of critical reception. Yeah, I use that one all the time. They also suggest checking out the work of individual critics, like Roger Ebert, who is known for his insightful and accessible writing. Oh, yes. Ebert was a legend. And they recommend exploring publications like Film Comet, 
which offer more in-depth analysis for serious film enthusiasts. So there's something for everyone, really. Exactly. Whether you're a casual viewer or a diehard scene file, there are reviews out there that will resonate with you. And I think it's important to find those voices that you connect with, you know, the critics who share your sensibilities or who challenge you to think differently about film. Absolutely. And that leads us perfectly to tip number nine, finding your own voice. Ah, yes. This is where things get really personal. It's about bringing your own unique perspective to the table, right? Exactly. And the guide uses a fantastic example here, a review of Beecher is at Dinner, where the critic connects their personal experiences with racism to the film's themes. Wow, that's powerful. It is. And it creates a really thought-provoking piece because it's not just about the film itself. It's about how the film interacts with the critic's own life and worldview. So it's like saying, here's what this film made me think about, and here's why you might find it interesting, too. Beautifully put, you're inviting the reader into a conversation. And that's what makes a review truly engaging, when it feels like a genuine exchange of ideas. I agree. It's about connecting with the reader on a personal level. So we've covered a lot of ground, watching closely, supporting our opinions, considering our audience, avoiding spoilers, and even finding our own voice as reviewers. What's the final piece of wisdom from the New York Film Academy? The last tip, and this one might be the most important of all, is to know your own taste. Okay, I'm intrigued. What does that mean in the context of writing movie reviews? Well, it means taking the time to really understand your own preferences as a movie watcher. Okay. Like, what kind of films do you usually enjoy? Uh -huh. What are your pet peeves? Right. What kind of stories resonate with you? So it's about being self-aware, not just about the films themselves, but about our own reactions to them. Exactly. And this self-awareness is crucial when you're writing a review because it allows you to be more honest and nuanced in your analysis. Okay. It's like saying, here are my biases going into this film, and here's how those biases might have shaped my viewing experience. That's a really interesting way to think about it. It's like acknowledging that we don't come to films as blank slates, right? Right. Yeah. We all have our own baggage, our own preferences, our own things that we're looking for in a story. Absolutely. Yeah. And by acknowledging those preferences, we can write more credible reviews. It's like saying, I'm a sucker for romantic comedies, but even I found this one predictable. Or, I usually hate horror movies, but this one genuinely scared me. It's about owning your perspective and using it to inform your analysis. Exactly. And the guide encourages us to actively explore different genres and directors to really understand what we like and what we don't like. Mm. The more films we see, the more we develop our own personal taste. It's like expanding our cinematic palette, right? Yes. Trying different flavors to see what excites our taste buds. I love that analogy. It's about being adventurous and open to new experiences. Mm -hmm. You might discover a genre or a director that you never thought you'd enjoy. Exactly. You never know what you might find. Okay, so we've gone through all 10 tips from the New York Film Academy's guide. We have. We've talked about watching closely, supporting our opinions, understanding our audience, avoiding spoilers, finding our voice, and even knowing our own taste. That's a lot to take in. It is. But it's all incredibly valuable information that can help you become a more informed and thoughtful movie watcher and maybe even a great reviewer. So let's bring this back to you, the listener. Think about a recent film you've seen. Yeah. One that really stuck with you, good or bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a film that made you think, a film that surprised you, or even a film that you just couldn't get out of your head. Pick one. Got one in mind. Okay. okay. Now imagine you're sitting down to write a review of this film. All right. You've got your laptop open, your favorite beverage at hand, and you're ready to put your thoughts into words. Got it. How would you approach this review differently now that you have these insights from the NYFA guide? Yeah, that's the question. What would you focus on? Think about it. Well, first of all, I'd probably watch the film again. Uh -huh. I bet I'd catch things I missed the first time around, especially those little details that the guide emphasized. Like what? Like recurring symbols, foreshadowing, things like that. That's a great instinct. Yeah. Remember, multiple viewings allow you to peel back the layers of a film, like an onion. You start to see the connections, the patterns, the subtle choices the director made to create a specific effect. And as I'm watching, I'd be paying closer attention to those key elements that the guide highlighted. Mm -hmm. The acting, the camera work, the editing, the music, even the pacing of the story. Exactly. It's about becoming a more active viewer. Okay. Not just passively absorbing the images and sounds. You're engaging with the film 
on an intellectual and emotional level, yeah. trying to understand how it's working its magic on you. And then when it comes to actually writing the review, I'd be thinking about my audience. Yeah. Am I writing this for my friends, for a blog, or maybe even for a more formal publication? That would definitely influence my writing style and the level of detail I'd go into. You're hitting all the right points. Am I? Knowing your audience is crucial because it helps you tailor your message effectively. Okay. You want to speak in a language that your readers will understand and appreciate. And of course, I wouldn't want to spoil anything for those who haven't seen the film. Right. I'd be super careful about how I discuss the plot and any major twists or surprises. Right. Respecting your audience also means respecting their right to experience the film fresh without any preconceived notions or spoilers. Now, this is where things get really interesting for me. Oh. Thinking about that tip about finding your own voice, uh -huh. I'd be looking for ways to connect the film to my own personal experiences, my own values, my own way of seeing the world. I love that. You do. That's what makes a review truly unique and engaging. When you can hear the writer's personality shining through, when you feel like you're getting a glimpse into their mind and their way of processing the film. It's like having a conversation with the reviewer, right? Yes. You're not just reading their words, you're engaging with their thoughts and feelings. Precisely. And that's where that final tip about knowing your own taste comes into play. You're not just reviewing the film in isolation, you're placing it within the context of your own cinematic journey. So it's like saying, Here's where this film fits into my personal landscape of cinema. Here's how it aligns with or challenges my usual preferences. Here's why it resonated with me on a deeper level. Beautifully put. It's about bringing your whole self to the review, not just your analytical mind, but also your emotional heart and your personal experiences. Okay, so we've talked about how these tips can help us become more thoughtful viewers and writers. But what about those times when we're just browsing for a movie to watch? Yeah. Scrolling through endless options of streaming services. How can these insights help us in those moments? That's a great question. And it leads us to an important shift in mindset. Instead of just looking at the star rating or the genre, mm -hmm. take a moment to actually read a few reviews before you make your choice. So it's about going beyond that initial gut reaction and really considering what others have to say about the film. Exactly. And remember, you're not looking for reviews that tell you what to think. Okay. You're looking for reviews that make you think about the film. Reviews that spark your curiosity. Reviews that offer a perspective you might not have considered on your own. That makes a lot of sense. It's like having a friend who knows a lot about movies give you a recommendation. You trust their taste and you're interested to hear their take on the film. Precisely. And even if you don't agree with the reviewer's overall assessment, you can still glean valuable insights for their analysis. Mm -hmm. Maybe they point out a theme that you didn't notice, or they highlight a performance that you want to see for yourself. So it's about using reviews as a tool for discovery, not just as a thumbs up or thumbs down. Exactly. And that leads us to a final thought-provoking question for you to consider. Okay, I'm all ears. What is it? As you're exploring those reviews and learning to appreciate different perspectives on film, Think about this. How can you apply this idea of finding your voice to other areas of your life? Ooh, that's a good one. It's not just about movies, is it? Exactly. Think about how you share your thoughts and opinions on books, art, music, even current events. Are you letting your unique perspective shine through? Are you engaging in meaningful conversations with others? That's a really interesting connection. I've never thought about it that way before. We're so used to just consuming media, scrolling through reviews, maybe giving a thumbs up or down. But what if we took it a step further? What if we really engaged with those works, thought critically about them, and then shared our own unique perspectives with the world? That's what this deep dive is all about. It's about empowering you to become a more active participant in the world around you, whether you're watching a film, reading a book, or even just having a conversation with a friend. So it's not just about becoming a film critic, it's about becoming a more engaged and thoughtful person overall. Exactly. And who knows, maybe this journey into the world of film criticism will inspire you to explore other forms of creative expression. Maybe you'll start writing your own reviews, or maybe you'll even be inspired to make your own films. Wow, I love that idea. This whole deep dive has been so eye-opening for me. I feel like I have a whole new set of tools for appreciating film and really for appreciating art and life in general. I'm so glad to hear that. Remember, it all starts with that curiosity, that yeah. desire to go beyond the surface and really engage with the world around you. So to wrap things up, what's the one piece of advice you'd give to our listeners as they embark on their journey to becoming more informed and engaged movie watchers? 
Be curious, hmm. be open-minded, and don't be afraid to share your unique perspective with the world. Your voice matters. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of movie reviews. We'll see you next time for another insightful exploration of the topics that matter to you.